Hey folks, how's everybody doing? You might have caught the news this week that NASA is getting usable data from Voyager 1 again, and unless you're a bit of a space nerd, you might be wondering why that's such a big deal. Well, I'm a bit of a space nerd, and this seemed to me like a great excuse to geek out about Voyager for a bit. Now, it all started with this guy, Gary Flandro. In 1964, Gary was working at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the JPL, investigating ways to send robotic probes to the outer planets of our solar system. He figured out that every 175 years, the four giant gas planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, would line up in just the right configuration that a spacecraft launched from Earth could use each planet's gravity to slingshot it towards the next one and send it on a grand tour of the solar system, and that the next alignment would happen in the late 1970s. NASA realized they weren't going to get another shot at this for a long, long time, so they built two robotic probes, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Voyager 2 was actually launched first in August 1977, and Voyager 1 followed a month later. And what I think is, is genuinely amazing is that nearly 50 years later, they're both still operational. Five months ago, November 2023, Voyager 1 began sending garbled telemetry data. We could still receive the transmissions, they just didn't make any sense. Now, if you look at a picture of Voyager 1, the most obvious feature is this thing, the main antenna dish. It's nearly four meters across, and it transmits about 23 watts of power. That's about as powerful as the light bulb in your refrigerator. And Voyager 1 is 24 billion kilometers from Earth. Those transmissions take over 22 hours to get to us, and by the time the signal arrives, it's been reduced to a tenth of a billionth of a billionth of a watt. There's, there's no way to even begin to explain just how faint that is. Imagine me standing at one end of a football field dropping a feather onto a cushion, and you're standing at the other end listening for the sound it makes, and you're not even getting close. To talk to Voyager, NASA uses three giant radio dishes. One is in California, one in Spain, one in Australia. Each dish is 70 meters across. Together, they're known as the Deep Space Network. A few weeks ago, the folks at the JPL figured out what had gone wrong. One of Voyager 1's onboard computer chips, part of something called the Flight Data Subsystem, had developed a fault, and they worked out a way to fix it using the deep space network to transmit instructions across 24 billion kilometers of space, they moved the affected code into different locations in Voyager 1's memory and updated the rest of its code to refer to those new locations. And it worked. On April 20th, for the first time in five months, the Voyager team started getting health and status updates from the spacecraft again. The next step is to get Voyager 1 sending actual scientific readings again, and this is where we get to what I think is the really, really cool part. Some of you might have seen this photograph before. This is called the Pale Blue Dot. It's a photograph of planet Earth taken by Voyager 1 in February 1990, so uh, it's probably the most expensive selfie ever taken. The camera that took this photograph, like everything else on Voyager, was built in the 1970s, years before we'd invented any of the technology that's used in modern digital cameras. To capture images as electronic data, Voyager's camera used something called a Vidicon tube, and those images, as well as all all the scientific data captured by Voyager's instruments get stored on tape, magnetic tape. Voyager has an actual mechanical tape deck. It looks like this, and it's designed so that the, the two tape reels you see in the picture, they rotate in opposite directions so that the gyroscopic effects from the spinning tape reels, they cancel each other out and don't interfere with the spacecraft's navigation. They shut down the cameras on Voyager 1 in the 1990s to save power. Turns out there's not a whole lot out there in interstellar space that's worth taking photos of. But as recently as 2023, that tape recorder was still working. NASA publishes the Voyager spaceflight operations schedule on their website. This is the schedule for November 9th, 2023. And the top half here, SC31, is Voyager 1. And you can clearly see here the playback command. So, 
If all goes well, over the next few weeks, NASA will get the flight data subsystem back up and running, and Voyager 1, way out there in interstellar space, will start capturing readings, recording them on magnetic tape, and waiting for the next playback command, telling it to rewind the tape, align the main dish towards Earth, and tell us what it's found out there. Now, the Voyager probes aren't going to last forever. They're powered by radioisotope thermal generators, RTGs. Uh, if you've read Andy Weir's book, The Martian, or you've seen the movie version with Matt Damon, the thing that Mark Watney, the stranded astronaut, digs up to keep him warm, that's an RTG. It's basically a big chunk of radioactive plutonium-238. The plutonium decays, generates heat. Voyager uses that heat to keep warm, warm enough that the instruments work and that the fuel on board doesn't freeze, and it uses heat to generate electricity using a device called a thermocouple. Voyager 1 has three plutonium RTGs on board. When it launched in 1977, they produced about 470 watts of power. But the half-life of plutonium-238 is about 88 years, and as it decays, it generates less power. Voyager 1's power output now is down to about 230 watts. And even if the systems and instruments on board work flawlessly, sooner or later there just won't be enough plutonium left to keep them running, and that'll finally be the end of the Voyager program. Right now, Radio transmissions from Voyager 1 take about 22 and a half hours to reach Earth, but it's traveling away from us at 17 kilometers per second. Now, you've heard of a light year? It's the distance that light travels through space in a year. Well, humankind is still a long way from sending anything other than radio transmissions a light year away from Earth. But on November 18th, 2026, Voyager 1 will be so far from Earth that those radio transmissions will take more than 24 hours to get here, which means it will have traveled one light day into deep space, which I think is really cool. Folks, thanks for listening. Take it easy, look after each other, and I'll catch you next time.